and a fighter's fight. Lots of boxing luminaries in the crowd, beginning with James Tony, who just uh, defeated Dominic Quinn last week in uh, Reno. Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. and Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Of course, super middleweight champ Jeff Left Hook Lacey throwing punches in the crowd and welterweight contender Shane Mosley. So a lot of uh, boxing greats, luminaries, famous people, celebrities on hand here in the house at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas. Well, the time has finally come for Carranas Castillo 2, the rematch of an extraordinary bout, one of the fiercest, most compelling matchups in recent memory. Yes, Diego Chico Carranas and Jose Luis Castillo together again. Hello again, everybody. Steve Albert, ringside from Las Vegas. We all expected Castillo Corrales 1 to be a good fight, but what we marveled at in May certainly exceeded the highest of expectations, just as Sugar Ray Leonard did in his first fight with Roberto Duran and Thomas Hearns did with Marvin Hagler. Corrales opted to stand and trade, a game plan that conventional wisdom suggested was strategic doom. Well, Corrales prevailed where Leonard and Hearns failed. Will Corrales choose to fight the same type of battle tonight? Will Castillo give him no choice? What we're about to find out is whether this eagerly awaited return can possibly match or even surpass the first fight. Now, I got to tell you, before the bell has even sounded for the rematch, an intriguing twist. At yesterday's weigh-in, Castillo, after three attempts, failed to make the division weight limit of 135 pounds. Therefore, the title belts are no longer on the line. However, their pride and legacy still hang in the balance. And with that, let me bring on my ringside partner, Steve Farhood, filling in tonight for Al Bernstein. And see what kind of a effects will this have on the, on the two fighters? Well, the effect on Castillo, of course, Steve, is the key because we don't know how much he struggled to get down to 138. Did he just give up trying to make weight? Did he did he go all the way and just couldn't take any more off because he was dehydrated? Physically, the idea of him going into the ring against Corrales at less than 100% doesn't bode well for him. Castillo, I mean, Corrales, on the other hand, I think all you had to see was his interview with Jim Gray in the locker room. He's loose. He's looking forward to this. And it seems to me, from what we've seen, he's not affected at all by any of this. Castillo's behavior, though, inexcusable and uh, to the point of unbelievable. It's the it's the biggest fight in his career, and it's one of the biggest rematches in boxing history. It's incredulous. And it's very unprofessional. Again, as I said at the top, this is a guy who's been making the lightweight limit, Steve, for, for seven, eight years. He's had trouble in one previous title fight making weight, but uh, this is the biggest fight. He's getting paid a seven-figure purse, and it's just unprofessional. Yeah, it's disrespectful to the sport yes. as well. What's What might be similar? What might be different? here in the rematch, Steve? Well, rematches, Steve, are often about adjustments, but I don't think so much this rematch. Look for Corrales and Castillo to fight the same type of frenzied battle. In that sense, they can't help themselves. This time, it's the intangibles that will be critical. How much did each fighter leave in the ring in May? Are both willing to again sacrifice what will be needed to win? How much will their weight issue affect the respective approaches? With that said, both Corrales and Castillo would be wise to have learned from their first fight. Jose Luis Castillo, fast start. The best way for Castillo to disconnect himself from the first fight is to come out punching. Don't reach. When these two boxed from a distance, Castillo almost never got countered because he never lunged. And get close. There's a reason Castillo forced Corrales and before that, slick boxers like Stevie Johnston and Floyd Mayweather to fight inside. He steps forward with his punches. Here, there's a distance between Castillo and Corrales. But Castillo steps in with his jab, and now he's where he wants to be. Diego Corrales punched downstairs. If Corrales wants to stop Castillo again, he'll need to weaken him first. Defend the uppercut. During the infighting, Corrales carried his left hand low, and as a result, Castillo threw 73 uppercuts. And move your feet. There's a good chance Corrales Castillo 2 is going to resemble Corrales Castillo 1. But Corrales can make things easier if he creates space.
between them, the better for Diego Corrales. So despite the Castillo weight problems, will this rematch still live up to expectations? Will it be as savage and brutal as the first fight? Will it prompt Corrales' trainer, Joe Goosen, to once again say, you'd have to be sadistic to want to see this again. Jose Luis Castillo, by not making weight, forks over $120,000, half to Corrales, half to the state of Nevada. Adding to the embarrassment, Castillo's camp doctor, Armando Barak, fined $1,000, suspended for slipping his foot under the scale to try and lighten the load for Castillo. He should be banned from boxing for life. Castillo's manager, Fernando Beltran, called Barack an egomaniac who fired trainer Tiburcio Garcia two weeks ago and then rehired him earlier this week. With Garcia out, Castillo stopped losing weight, but Castillo has no one to blame but himself. You know, we've thrown many accolades his way when he's deserved it. Now he deserves a big shame on you, Jose Luis Castillo. Castillo made 147 at a 3 o'clock weigh-in today. Who knows how much weight he's put on since then? And remember how he said the first fight was tarnished by the mouthpiece issue. Well, now he's tarnished the rematch. Is it possible that Castillo did this intentionally to give him the advantage with no regard for the titles? By doing this, he'd be stronger than Corrales, who followed the rules. You know, he did bet Corrales' promoter, Gary Shaw, $100,000 that he'd knock out Corrales. Well, Steve, if you want to go conspiracy theory, and I'm not saying I do, it would all depend on when Castillo decided not to try and make weight. If he made that determination several days ago, then yeah, he'd have a huge advantage now. But if he made that determination after the weigh-in, and while he was sitting in the sauna, then I don't think there's much of an advantage for him right now. Logically, I would think Castillo would be drained physically and emotionally. Not Corrales, but who knows? If there was any doubt, the first fight personified the toughness, power, and uncanny courage of Diego Corrales, who said he'd go through hell to win. Well, after seeing his face, he probably did. However, because Castillo failed three times to make weight... Let's listen. A final prayer session for Corrales and his team. Corrales making his way to the ring now. As I was saying, because Castillo failed to make weight, casting a whole different light on this fight, although it could still be a great fight, a crowd-pleasing fight. But we can only wonder how that will impact on Corrales, Steve, psychologically. It's a fair question to ask. All I know is that this fight, to the fans and to Corrales, was never really about the two titles. In that sense, I don't think there's that much of a change in Corrales' attitude. When the bell rings, these guys are going to tear into each other, and Corrales wants to validate what happened in May by winning again tonight. The irony uh, is he can probably relate, recalling how he struggled with weight problems and was decked five times against Floyd Mayweather uh, Jr. The weight problems affected his strength, his stamina, his focus as he makes his way in.
deafening in here, and it's uh, pretty clear that the crowd is favoring Castillo. Bottom line, whether there are world titles at stake or not, I'm racing for another wild shootout, and I think the crowd... No. So they're both in the ring. Referee Joe Cortez with the final checks. Let's check the figures as we go to the tail of the tape. So here at the Thomas and Max Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, we're getting ready for our main event, the rematch, Diego Corrales versus Jose Luis Castillo. Let's get the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the Thomas and Max Center here at the campus of UNLV in Las Vegas, Nevada as it's time for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Gary Shaw Productions and Top Rank Incorporated in association with Caesars Palace, Wind Resorts and Showtime. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission the Chairman Skip Avancino Jr., Commissioners Dr. Tony Alamo, John Bailey, Joe W. Brown, and Dr. Flip Omansky, the Executive Director Mark Ratner. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Jeff Davidson, Dr. James Game, Dr. Al Capanna, and Dr. Todd Chapman. Timekeepers at the bell also keeping count of the knockdowns tonight, James Cavan and Mike Lachella. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Jerry Roth. From Providence, Rhode Island, Clark Sammartino. And from Tokyo, Japan, Nobuaki Uratani. Now introducing to you our referee in the ring, fair but firm, Joe Cortez. All right, fans, here we go. The time has come. For the main event of the evening, the rematch you've all been waiting for. 12 rounds of boxing in a lightweight special attraction. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Las Vegas, it's showtime. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with red and green trim, hailing from and representing Empalme, Sonora, Mexico. His weight, 138 and one half pounds, with a record of 52 wins, seven losses and one draw. He has 46 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the two-time WBC lightweight champion of the world, Jose Luis El Temible Castillo. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner in this 12-round special attraction, wearing black trunks with gray trim, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Sacramento, California. He weighed in at the lightweight limit of 135 pounds, with a record of 40 wins, two losses. He has 33 wins coming by way of knockout, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former junior lightweight world champion and the current WBC and WBO lightweight champion of the world, introducing Diego Chico Corrales. Once again, a referee in charge, Joe Cortez, now to give instructions. 12 rounds of boxing schedule. All right, gentlemen. We won all the rules in the dressing room. Yolita Regalado, Don Camerino. I expect a good, clean fight. Quiero una pelea limpia. Los golpes aquí están bueno. The punches here are still good. Give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all time. And remember, guys, 
I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch him up. You saw Team Corrales holding up the three belts, WBC, WBO, and the Ring Magazine belt, but those are not at stake tonight. Corrales ready for Castillo. We met with Castillo yesterday. His exact words to us were, last time I lost my championship, this time I'm going to get two championships. Well, minutes later at the weigh-in, it became a moot point when he couldn't make weight. So despite the controversy, will they continue where they left off five months ago? In essence, is this round 11? The prevailing opinion, no matter what, another shootout is inevitable. We'll soon see. Well, because of the controversy, Steve, it just adds so many new layers to this fight that didn't exactly. exist before. But all that stuff's over now. It's a fight. And it's already a good fight because they're going at it right on the inside. Castillo normally not a fast starter. He gets stronger as the fight goes on. That one of the reasons the game plan of the first fight was for Corrales to jump right on. And trade left hook 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 with Castillo. Castillo's landing his left hook and watch that right uppercut. It was a weapon again and again in the first fight. And uh, Corrales coming straight in. And there's a left hook to the jaw by Castillo. Watch your head, watch your head. Watch your head, get him out. Get him out. Get him out. Get him out. You watch Castillo start quickly. Usually a slow starter, you wonder. Just conjecture, but does he in the back of the line make I don't know if I have the energy to go 12 hard rounds. Another left hook upstairs by Castillo. And they're picking right up where they left off. Big first round for Castillo, though. No doubt he's taking it so far halfway through. And that is nothing uh, new as far as uh, Castillo is concerned. Big left hook again by Castillo. So Castillo starting strong, and there's a right hand over the top by Jose Luis Castillo. Corrales missing. Steve, we were wondering if... Oh, big right hand by Corrales. We were wondering if Corrales would make any adjustments. No adjustments. He's happy again to fight Castillo's fight. The same exact styles as the first fight. Castillo, who weighed in at 147, about 3, 4 o'clock today. Corrales, 149, at about 6 p.m. Remember, these are lightweights, 135. Castillo 12 above, Corrales 14. The weight limit. Final seconds of round one. A better first round here for Jose Luis Castillo landing many left hooks. I, yeah, keep that eye. That's getting a little red there, that's all. And you gotta rinse this off. I need a bucket right here. Um, you know what? Use that little jab. Once you finish with everything, use that little jab to restart your combo. Okay? Round one, we start with heavy punching on the inside and low blows right on the Chico. And Joe Cortez says, hey, that's low. And later in the round, Corral is willing to stay on the inside. And as was the case in the first fight, long armed fighter, yes, but he's very comfortable and very capable of landing big shots when he's, right, when he's in close. Seconds out. So they fight mainly on the inside again to begin the rematch. Here we go, round two, scheduled for 12. A key to Corrales' win in the first fight was his hand speed. No one thing, no hold, let's go. But he was so successful whenever he would take a step back and
and box. But obviously, he chose to fight inside and trade. And he's doing the same thing here. These are hard shots by both. Oh, nice left uppercut by Castillo. And that was a good weapon in the first fight. And he didn't use it often enough, the uppercut. And boy, Castillo just throws that left hook so naturally. You notice, even on the inside, his left foot is always in front of his right, which allows him to bend and get leverage on that left hook. He turns his hip, and he really bends and gets full power on that shot almost every time. Castillo trying to force a third fight, a trilogy, with a victory here tonight. And then he can fight for the belts. Look at a series of left hooks by Castillo, landing repeatedly on the head of Perales. And then a right uppercut on the inside by Castillo. Another one, a combination, and it's all Castillo. Back comes Corrales with a left hook. But a right hand by Castillo, and then it's Corrales' turn. Here we go again. Now Corrales sends Castillo back. And a right uppercut by Castillo. And they continue to trade. And this crowd is into it. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. Did we see this fight already? It looks familiar. It's mirroring the first fight, and we're only in round second. Steve, they're smothering each other, and it's Corral is pushing Castillo back. He wants the infight oh, even oh, more oh, than oh, Castillo oh, does. Oh, 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 oh. There's some blood now around the right eye of Corrales as the heads uh, came him together. Him and that's not going to stop Corrales. He's been in a lot worse shape than this. He has absolutely no quit. Well, he's the fighter that got busted up badly in the first fight. What's happening now is getting busted up again and maybe five months in terms of the recovery from the beating he took to his face. Maybe five months wasn't enough. Yeah, factor going in was uh, who recovered quicker. Corrales. The momentum shifting for Corrales here, but then just when you say that, of course, Castillo comes back. Oh, there's a big left hook by Castillo right on the chin. And once again, they meet in the proverbial phone booth in the center of the ring. Oh, left hand to the guard of Corrales. Sam Castillo. What a round. Right oh, 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 you got your drilling and going? All right. D, close your eye. Hey. I'm just looking at it, Stitch. Yeah, it's all right. I'm just looking. Take your eye. Some deep breath. Mm -hmm. okay. When you go inside, don't go in with your left. Just throw your combination. Keep throwing combinations. Keep going. Come on, you're hurting him. Keep, keep going. Hit him. Okay, hit him hard. Okay, go to the body. Raise your hands. Mark Ratner held up a sign saying the cut was actually from a punch. If a cut is caused by a punch and the injured fighter can't continue, he loses by TKO. The scorecards go out the window. But I would say unlikely in the case of Corrales. Blood appeared near the right eye of Corrales with one minute left in round two. Man, this is the same pattern as the first fight. Toe-to-toe -to -toe action. Bombs thrown by both fighters. And recall the first fight swelling on the Corrales side became a problem starting in round seven. This time earlier. Castillo, <laughs> this amazing pace can continue. Well, and then that, of course, brings into the count the question about the weight with Castillo. If he drained himself, can he fight this way for 12 rounds? Right now it's not affecting him, but we're only in round three. We'll see. He looks very uh, energized, very strong. Get him up, get him up, get him up. Let's go, get him up. Joe Cortez, the third man of the ring. Hard body shots by Castillo. 
Hopefully that the cumulative effect will be a factor later on. The next jab, Corrales throws will be the first. Yeah. That's something uh, we could have said in the first fight as well. Uppercuts on the inside, a very valuable weapon for Castillo. The chance of Castillo from the, uh, the crowd. Only 5,000 for the first fight. Maybe closer to uh, 16, 17,000 here, 18. Who knows? Hard to say. Steve, when they're on the inside like this. Oh, the trouble from the straight back by Castillo here in round three, and he's got a minute to go. Corrales wobbled, staggered, he buckled, and was momentarily dazed. Hold on, go hold the hand, hold the hand. Can he hang on? And he continues to just stand in there. He doesn't hold or he doesn't box. He fights. And he's walking into the shots. He's walking into the fire. Incredible. He's still inching forward. And even throwing. When hurt. And landing. And frustrating Castillo. Body oh, what a left hook after the two body punches. And a right hand by Castillo. Corrales remains on his feet and remains throwing punches. Unbelievable chin and heart by Corrales. All right, time. Can you feel that? I know you do. I know you do. Hey, okay, now easy on him, baby. Easy. Hold on. Hold on. Let me have that water. I need the water. All right. Now listen to me. Listen to me. You back them up. You sort of back them. Okay. Now, keep those hands up good. Try to use that little short straight right hand every so often. It's kind of hip to the little. In round three, Corral is willing to trade the right hand of all punches, which it was the left hook the whole fight for Castillo. And after landing that big right, he hurts Cor Corrales again with a left uppercut. And at the end of the round, Corrales was pushing Castillo back. What kept Chico up? And the end of round three, look at Corrales coming back. And there was a moment just before this where he was landing from the outside. He went right back to the inside. That's where he wants to be. That's where he has to be. It's meant to be. Right. Round four. Scheduled for 12. Rugged round, Corrales, who uh, was nearly put down, but he's coming back strong. The swelling continues under the right no, eye. His no, nose is swollen. Yeah, his nose is swollen big, and you know what? Corrales right now trying to commit to a strong jab. It's the first time we've seen it. And Corrales continues. Oh! stops and he got up at 10 and Cortez has stopped the fight and Corrales has evened the score. And Castillo has evened the score. <laughs> Jose Luis Castillo with a fourth round knockout. Castillo, historically a slow starter, gets it done fast. And we were worried about Castillo draining himself, trying to make weight. He was the stronger fighter throughout. Well, he didn't win any titles. But he takes the rematch and uh, perhaps sets up a trilogy. If he can make 135, yes. And he also won the bet with promoter Gary Shaw of $100,000 by KOing Corrales. Which uh, cancels out some of the fine that he paid. Yeah, that was $120,000.
What's a few hundred thousand yeah. euro there among friends, right? So Jose Luis Castillo has settled the score tonight, and he did it with the big left hook. A lot of people are stunned, including uh, what looks like Cal Ripken. Yes. And Corrales <laughs> looks stunned as well. Joe Goosen and uh, Stitch uh, Duran uh, helping Corrales out. A uh, bittersweet victory for Castillo. Sweet from the standpoint of redemption. Bitter in terms of no titles to show for it because he didn't make weight. You take a look at the knockdown, boy. Corrales took so much punishment in the first fight. Not tonight. You can understand why he went down. That was his perfect and clean a left hook. He was getting hit with left hooks from the first minute of the first round. He never defended it properly, never slid under it. He's a tall fighter, and he was right in line to that left hook. And look at him. When he gets up, and you know he's going to try to get up, watch his legs. That's not getting up straight. Joe Cortez had no choice. A good call. Steve, uh, there's no question Castillo looks so much stronger than uh, Corrales and continues to raise questions about that weigh-in. And you see the knockdown punch again. Corrales winding up to throw his own right. Perfect timing by Castillo. Land that left hand unimpeded. Perfect knockout shot. Well, he kept his mouthpiece in. Yeah, <laughs> good point. Boy, his eyes are just totally glazed. And you know what, Steve? He, he wasn't just knocked out tonight. He was beaten up. I mean, his, he was marked. He was cut. One more look at the culmination of, of a rematch that did not go anything like the first fight because of Corrales' inability to soak up punishment tonight. Maybe he was too loose, too relaxed, as we saw earlier in the uh, dressing room. Look at his eyes. Wow, his nose is swollen about twice his size. You can see that. He's cut over the right eye, and it's hard to believe it's only the fourth round. A bruised and battered Diego Chico Corrales. He got up at around 10, but he was in really bad shape, and there's no questioning the, the stoppage by referee Joe Cortez. And given what happened in May in the first fight, I think Castillo was very happy Corrales didn't get up and start returning fire. That's interesting because he said that this time when he will put Corrales down, Corrales won't get up. Well, he got up at 10, but the fight was stopped. Let's get the official uh, situation from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. 47 seconds in round number four. Our referee in charge, Joe Cortez, reaches the count of 10. He is the winner by way of knockout, Jose Luis El Temible Castillo. So Castillo raising his hand in victory. And he has even the score. It could set up a rubber match, a trilogy, if you will. We'll have another shot at winning the titles and making even more money. We mentioned how he won the, the bet with uh, Corrales' promoter, Gary Shaw, of $100,000. So uh, he's just uh, he's really ahead of the game now, I'd say. Let's go to Jim Gray. Without your permission. All right, Steve. Thank you very much. Jose, congratulations. Ricardo will once again translate for us. What was the difference tonight between this fight and the first fight? What was the difference between this fight and the first fight? This time I trained. The other one, unfortunately, I didn't have time to train. But, well, they are not excuses. And here are the results of the training camp. You know, last time I didn't have time. You know, last time I didn't have time. There was not enough training camp. This time there was plenty, and I can show you what I do if I'm trained well. Were you able to see something in the first fight that enabled you to know that if he stayed inside, that you would be able to win. Que viste algo de él que podías sabías que si aunque te peleara dentro lo podías le podías ganar. Bueno, Diego Diego es un gran campeón y bueno le gusta el intercambio de golpes y se presta mi estilo y bueno bueno se prestó y saqué un buen resultado. I think you know his style is perfect for what I do. 
He comes in, he likes to be in the inside. That's what I love to do. It, it's just easier for me. The weight issue. You did not make weight. Julio Cesar Chavez, who you are his idol. He is your idol, rather. And before the fight, he said he was very disappointed in you. It never happened to him. Are you embarrassed that you didn't make weight? Lo del peso. ¿Cómo sientes no haber hecho el peso? Muy triste, muy decepcionado, ¿no? Desgraciadamente, batallamos bastante para el peso. Nos descuidamos, tuvimos un error, pero... Pero bueno, le pido una disculpa públicamente a, al señor Bob Aaron y, y espero no volver a fallarle. You know, I'd like to apologize, you know, to everyone, especially Bob Aaron, because, uh, you know, it never happened to me in my career. I did make some mistakes I shouldn't have, and uh, I couldn't make weight. Why couldn't you make the weight? Why? What happened in your training camp that allowed you to be overweight? Dile, ¿por qué, por qué sentiste que no pudiste este, dar el peso tú? Bueno, no lo, no lo di porque... Hace, no sé, 15 días estuve lastimado de una costilla, incluso peleé con la costilla un poco lastimada. Afortunadamente, salió, salió bien las cosas y no pude hacer mucho, entrenar muy fuerte, por eso no pude dar muy bien el peso. I had a, you know, I, my rib was hurt two weeks ago and I couldn't, I couldn't work out for a few days. I knew that was going to be a problem, but, you know, I still hurt a little bit, but I had to be here. So this was not for the title, so Corrales is still the champion. There's an automatic clause for a rematch, according to Bob Arum for this fight, would you like to fight him again for the title and will you be able to make weight? ¿Te gustaría enfrentarte otra vez a él en 135 otra vez por una pelea de campeonato? No, a lo mejor sí, hacemos un, no sé, como la película de Rocky, 5 o 6 peleas, pero las 5 o 6 van a ser muy interesantes, muy buenas. Hey, I'm willing to do it. If they want to do like the Rocky movies, do 5 or 6, let's do it. Let's bring in Diego Corrales. Stay with us, please. Diego. We're invoking oh, oh. Our, our right for the rematch. Okay, well that's fine, but let me talk to the fighter first, Gary. Diego. What happened this evening? We saw you, you were so relaxed, you were so at ease, and then tonight you just got caught and, and it seemed as though you couldn't recover from the second round. Uh, you know what? No, I was good. I was fine from the second round. I said I was good. I just, you know what? I'll take them from I won't make no excuses. It got me the good shot, you know. Fourth round got me a good shot. I opened up two kind of wild with my shot, I think it was. I'm not sure. I'll go back to the tape and I'll take a look at it. But these things happen in boxing. I mean, we're not a... Uh, we're not a... Uh, uh, Hitting each other with powder puffs out there, you know? So, it's, it's cool. It, I mean, it happens to the best of us, and uh, it happened to me tonight. Before we take a look at the shot, how deflating has the past 24 hours been for you? You thought you were going to defend your title. Seemed like a lot of the air in this fight went out when he didn't make weight. Did that affect you at all? You know, I, I won't make an excuse. I'll tell you what, I won't do it. You know what? I, I, I'm not, not asking you to make an excuse. I'm just wondering if it affected you at all. You know what? If it did, uh, it's between me and God. I'm going to tell you what, I won't do anything to, to take away from the credit of his win. And uh, if, if I did if I did say that, if I said whatever, it, it, it could take away from his, from the credit of his win. And I, I won't do that to him. I have too much pride to do that to him. Um, Was there any advantage that he gained by not having to deplete himself and get to weight, uh, whereas you had to? You know, again, I, I'm not going to do anything to just to take away from his win. I mean, I have my opinions on it, and, and, and well, I give them to us. It's okay. I mean, no, no, it's it's cool. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm telling the truth because I'm gonna tell you, what, I'm a man of, of a great deal of pride, and uh, I take pride in what I do. And, and it was it's, when I came in on on weight, that's my pride making me do that. To come here and defend my title as, as honorably as I can, that's my pride making me do these things. So I won't take away. I have too much pride to take away from his great win. Um, all I can say is, you know, again, you guys support cancer research. It's a, it's a, a debilitating disease, and uh, support it. Of course, we all agree to that. You elected to stay inside, and by doing so, it seemed as though you were playing right into his game. Tell us about this knockdown here. You know, this is my first time taking a look at it. It looks like, see, I throw a left hook, right hand, left hook, and I, I opened my hand up. Plain and simple, I opened up. Uh, when I was throwing my, my the other foot back, I opened my hand. I opened my hand out, and uh, that's that's that, that's a great shot. Diego, you always get up. You take pride in getting up. Obviously, oh, yeah. no one wants to see you get hurt, yeah. and everybody has your best interest at heart. How difficult was this moment for you when you were counted out by Joe? Was I counted out? Well, if he counted you, he elected that you could not continue. I don't know if it, we'll, we'll talk to Joe exactly, but I, I said, you know, I still believe carry me out on my shield. Carry me out on my back. Don't don't let me walk out. I mean, I shouldn't walk out of here. Joe, did you count him out, or did or or, or did you stop the fight? I, I counted I counted ten. He was up, but he was still all 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 out of out of in bad condition, and I felt it was the best thing to stop it there. We don't want any tragedies in boxing, but my first and foremost concern is the safety of the fighter, and you know, what would happen next? God only knows. But I did the right thing, and if the fighter was not up on his on his, on his own will, 
you know, he's up, but he's all bent out of shape. To me, that's still considered down. Diego, there's a clause for a third fight. If he can make weight, it'll be a title fight. Is that something that you're interested in? Or? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think uh, let's do it right now. I, I say we could we can wrap up and go back tonight. Well, you raise an interesting point you say right now, but did you suffer at all from having this fight and all the punishment that both of you took so soon after the first fight? I don't know. I mean, uh, that's going to be to the opinion of people. I, I think everybody's going to form their opinions tonight on, on whether or not we did. Um, What's your opinion, though? You're, you're in your body. We're not. You're in your mind. Was it too soon? No, I think I'm, I was fine. I'm young. I, I can recover from something like that. It was just plain and simple, a great shot. Again, I'll take nothing from the guy. He, uh, he landed a great shot, uh, uh, my mistake, my, my, my boo-boo, and uh, he, won, he made a great shot. He won a fight. Uh, take nothing from him. I, I, won't, I won't do that to him. I mean, I take too much pride in this sport. Appreciate your time. You're a class Thanks. act, Diego. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations to you, Jose. We look forward to the third fight. Dicen que quieren la tercera pelea. Dicen que quieren ver. Bueno, no sé. Vamos a ver. Vamos a platicar con la gente de Top Rank, que son los que me manejan. Y si ellos deciden que sí, pues adelante. You know, if Top Rank says let's do a third time, we'll do it. We're ready. I do want to ask one other question because I did ask Diego this. Did you have an advantage over him because you did not have to deplete yourself to make the weight, and he did? ¿Tú crees que una ventaja por haber este no no dado el peso y él sí? No, no, no. Bueno, el día del pesaje no di el peso, pero hoy me hicieron pesarme, me hicieron que se pesara 147 kilos, 147 libras, perdón, y di 